more we use antibiotics, the more resistant the bacteria become. A new report from the World Health Organization is bringing attention once again to the rise of antibiotic-resistant bacteria and its impact now as well as the future. Welcome back to 10 News at 5. I'm Beth Haynes. The WHO says antibiotic resistance is widespread in every part of the world and it's reached alarming levels in many areas. It's an issue that the CDC has highlighted as well and the promotion of proper use of antibiotics is one of its primary goals for 2014. We are joined now by Dr. Michael Bernard with Southern Medical Group for more on this problem and some you all have been uh, looking at for some time now. Um, let's begin by, by talking about, um, obviously this report, several diseases once easily cured with antibiotics now resist even the latest, most potent drugs. What kinds of diseases and infections are facing the most resistance right now that you see? Well, right now I see staph infections as the primary resistance. When I first started here 20 years ago, I would never see resistant bug. Mm -hmm. Recently, I see bugs that you would only see in hospitals as recently as seven years ago. So it, just in that short period of time, it's very alarming to you, I would think, as a physician. Absolutely. The first time I saw it out in the community, I remember calling a couple of infectious disease colleagues and saying, what's going on here? We actually see it in our office now every day. Wow. Pretty remarkable there. Let's talk about these super bugs and nightmare bacteria and how they develop this resistance. Well, inappropriate use of antibiotics is certainly one key mechanism by which we re get resistance. Mm -hmm. We use antibiotics for things that are viral, mm -hmm. for allergies. We kill off good bacteria and we leave bacteria that are resistant to common antibiotics. So taking those antibiotics too often and then not necessarily when you, you have a bacterial infection, when they're not needed. What, what can patients do to help this problem? Well, when you get antibiotics, you should complete the full course of antibiotics. You shouldn't take your friends or your mom's antibiotics. You should know what you're treating. Mm -hmm. So if you have a problem, go to your doctor, ask your doctor, do I really need antibiotics? Could this be something else? Could it be viral? Could it be allergies? Mm -hmm. What about from a doctor's standpoint? What can physicians do to, to help curb this issue? We need to have an open conversation with our patients and let them know that sometimes we can wait a few days and see how your symptoms develop. All sore throats aren't necessarily bacterial. Sometimes it's viral. All urinary symptoms aren't necessarily bacterial infections. So those type of open, honest questions and conversations really help promote the appropriate use of antibiotics. Tough situation. I guess a lot of uh, patients probably want that quick fix and don't want to suffer through the symptoms. But if it's not bacterial, would an antibiotic even impact the symptoms of a viral infection? It, it won't help a virus. It won't help inappropriate um, infections and it can lead you very sick. You can kill off all the good bacteria in your gut. One disease for example is something called C. diff, C. difficile, which leaves you with this terrible, very hard to, to treat um, gastrointestinal disease. It's, yeah. and so it can really leave you sicker than if you just would have let time heal you. And suffered through and those suffered initial through. symptoms. Well, right. Let's talk about this. Many food companies now committing to use only antibiotic-free meats and animal products. Um, is the use of these antibiotics in animals that are grown for food a part of the problem? Yeah, it is a part of the problem because, again, you're, you're breeding resistant bacteria. So, you know, part of the problem certainly are physicians inappropriately using antibiotics. Part of the problem is our food industry. Our patients can do a better job of understanding when antibiotics are needed and then um, legislation to say when is the appropriate use of antibiotics in livestock, when is that appropriate, how should those be used. Yeah, it sounds like we all need to take an active role in this issue because it's getting out of hand. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate you being with us. I'm glad to be here. Thank all you. Right.